it's uh, football this week, I think, is it? Yeah, um, the Finding Jack Charlton doc is on on Virgin Media, and I think it's actually repeated on BBC Two the following Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I actually got a hold of this this week and watched it, and it is really, it's not an easy watch. It's very, very hard. Like, it's really heartbreaking. So it's, there's a lot of stuff in it that's like the old 88 and 90 and all the great stuff that people just never, ever get sick of watching. And that's brilliant. And some behind the scenes stuff and Jack starting to sing songs and all. But it's kind of woven with him in the last couple of years of his life suffering from dementia. And they're basically showing him clips of the computer of like, do you remember this, Jack? And do you remember when this happened? And he's like, no, I don't, I don't remember this. And it's just... I, we grew up with Jack Charlton and he was such a, like, beyond, beyond how his own name, he was like a god in Arrows. And you just, you, there was such a spark about him. And it's gone a little bit in the last couple of years of his life. And he's not, he just keeps repeating himself a little bit. And it's it's actually, it's, I found it a very, very difficult watch because you just have such an attachment to him as a person. He's this great honorary Irish man. And then there's kind of the, the Paul McGrath story is, is woven in there as well and Paul is really really honest about like everything that happened to him and his involvement with Jack and how Jack had encouraged him and it's do you know there's a lot of like great moments where you're like oh yeah I remember that I remember it, how nice and how amazing it was and then it's kind of god like Paul is suffering Jack is suffering now and it's it's actually a really good documentary like I totally recommend watching it even if you're not into football it's just a very very good documentary it's called Finding Jack Charlton. It's on Virgin Media on Sunday. That's on BBC next week. Uh, I think it's on Apple as well. It certainly was for a, a period of time there. Yeah, because it got a release early. Yeah, but it's just launched on TV this week. Yeah. Okay. And um, there's a, a, a donate for dementia.ie and uh, there's a jumping jacks craze that people are, are filming. And that's all uh, in association with Virgin Media this week as well. Uh, The hashtag is donate for dementia. Uh, Flight attendant on Sky, we want to talk about this. This is the new and shiny stuff this week. What what is flight attendant? I really enjoying this. And I I can't really tell, like, I feel like I say this to you a lot, but I can't really tell if it's brilliant or not, but it's really addictive. (laughs) So it's Kelly Kuko who's in uh, The Big Bang Theory. This is kind of her first big role and she really fought for this role because they were like, you know, when you do a big series like The Big Bang Theory, you're just not going to be able to get away from that character. But she plays a, a flight attendant who just has this chaotic life. She's an alcoholic. She's just got this, like, it's kind of flashes of her uh, relationship with her father. It wasn't that great. And then she goes on a date uh, when she's uh, on a trip, wakes up the next morning and the guy is dead in the bed beside her and she cannot remember anything from the night before. Uh, she cleans up the room and then just leaves and gets on a flight back and is completely panicked all the way through. Every Anytime anyone says anything to her or questions where she was the night before, she's just completely a wreck and decides that it's a really good idea to try and find out who actually did kill him instead of actually just trying to cover her own tracks. So she's just this walking disaster. And that's what like kind of what makes it so entertaining because she's really, really funny. But I think people, have, like, it's a bit jarring in parts because it kind of sometimes doesn't know what it is itself. But it just, you get to the end of the episode and you're like, I'm going to have to find out, like, who did kill him? And, like, what did happen? And it's all told a flashback then through her night. But she's very good. She's actually very good in it. And I'm really enjoying it. I think people who watch it will just be binging all the way through it. Is it going to be one season? Is that is that the plan? Oh, no, it's, there's a second season. There's a second season, yeah. And there's eight episodes in the first, so I'm kind of, I was afraid to look because I'm only on episode three and I was afraid to look to see how they're going to set up episode or season two. But I just, I think she's actually quite good and she's a good comedy actress and I don't think people give enough credit to comedy actors. It's actually a very difficult thing to make people laugh and they're usually passed over, but she's, she's very good in this. You've got that right smile on there. What's that going on? Oh, like I'm, I'm looking forward to to seeing this. I've I've heard very mixed reviews of this. Is the is the thing? Uh, yeah. So I'm 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 surprised. Usually when I see a mixed review coming out, I usually predict that Sue is going to fall down on the side of going a little harsher than most people on it. So I'm I'm pleasantly surprised by this. So uh, we can cut through the noise and tell you to watch this this week. Yeah, like I think watch it. I like. It's addictive and it's a binge watch. And but I like I don't think it's going to fit in jars like this has to be brilliant or I'm not going to watch it. So I don't think jars going to watch it. But I think if you're just I, know, I, I, 
I just said that, that like the cut top cast that I'm interested in. Um, but ultimately, there's only a limited amount of TV shows you're going to be able to watch before you die. So, you know, don't be wasting time on crap. There's a lot of good stuff out there. Um, <laughs> the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, what the hell is this? Oh, yeah, I, this is kind of maybe my fall into the bracket of Joe waste your time. And that, well, I, I seem to be very much in the minority on this because the reviews of this have been brilliant. But it, set, it takes place after Avengers Endgame. And I feel like I was talking about this during the week and I just feel like if they pick the two characters that nobody will have any sort of personal connection with in the Avengers and they try to they try to make a series out of them. And it's just kind of like the Falcon was obviously handed to Captain America's shield at the end of the Avengers, and it's basically you go on and, and you're going to defend uh, you're going to defend America, and it's it's kind of this Anthony Mackie plays Sam Wilson who's the Falcon, he's just kind of like, oh, will I be able to take up this mantle? And that's basically the first episode is him just wrestling with the fact that he could be a, a superhero. You just there's a couple of like really huge fight sequences and then there's kind of flashbacks of who the winter soldier was before and like all of the things he's trying to make amends for in his life and it just feels very samey and for me it's disappointing because wandavision was so good and they actually did something that was a bit of a departure and something completely different and then you have this and you're like oh we're just taking another step back and we're back to the start now i will say i'm in the minority in this and people are really really liking it and the reviews have been good but I just felt like it was so much set up in the first episode. I just was like, please just get to the point. Get to the point. You just hate superhero things anyway, don't you? <laughs> I don't hate them. I used to be a massive superhero fan. And then, like, I was reviewing at the time and all those Avengers films came out. And you're like, like, you're 25, 30 films. You're just like, I cannot watch another superhero film. Like, it's just very hard to do. That yeah. sounds like a real first world problem, doesn't it? But it's, it's almost like perfect for a television format isn't it like I, it, it's a relatively new thing that we're starting to see like the mandalorian and wandavision and this like now on uh, in a small screen version whereas you would have thought that anything to do with star wars or marvel just ha has to be big screen big all screen. the time whereas this makes more sense as you say 30 films is stupidly long uh could that have been a little better if this is actually a long drawn out 10 part series or 10 series uh television show for example i accept that commercially it makes no sense uh but quality wise it does yeah and probably like COVID has probably led it to be a series as well a tv series but i definitely think like even though it is the two characters that you probably won't have the greatest connection with they could probably could make them into something that you would have a connection with and they've done that with wanda so it's, it's possible it could get better and it's just taken a while to get everyone back in. You're like, oh, do you remember Avengers Endgame? Let's get everyone back into that frame. So that that's why I was finding it a bit difficult because it's just like, I remember Avengers Endgame and I think a lot of people who are big Marvel fans will remember a lot of this film. So it just feels like the first episode is really slow. But I don't know. I'm kind of a bit skeptical. Sorry. Two other quick things we want to talk about. Molly's Game on Netflix and National Treasure on Four On Demand. Yeah, if you haven't, I am obsessed with National Treasure. If you haven't seen it, it is like, I, I think I'm like, I should basically be getting a quote from Channel 4 at this stage. I mean, I've, I've, times I've talked about it. It's on all four. It's only four episodes. It's probably called Train Plays a, a Comedian Who's Accused of Sexual Assault. And it's a, it's, it's a historic um, accusation. And he denies it all the way through the, the series. And he's trying to like, protect his family. Julie Walters plays his wife. Andrea Riceborough, an amazing performance as his daughter, and she's very, very troubled, and he's trying to protect her from everything that's happening. And but the, all the way through it, you're like, did you do it? Did you do it? Oh, maybe you didn't. Oh, maybe you did. Oh, maybe you didn't. And his performance is absolutely incredible in the four episodes, and he will keep you guessing all the way through. But it came out around the same time as the Savile stuff. Like, it's been around for a few years, and I think maybe three years. But if you missed it... Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a few, maybe, I didn't realize it was that old. Yeah, but it's absolutely yeah. brilliant. Like, the performances of this are so, so good. Yeah. Any oh, connection to so the Nicolas Cage film? <laughs> no, that would be interesting, though. That crossover would be interesting. Yeah, apparently, there's a series of those films. And, uh, there's more coming back. Um, so that's Robbie Coltrane. In, uh, it's on 4OD, and it's called National Treasure. Molly's Game, did you mention that? Yeah, I, I feel like Molly's Game when it came out, it came out in 2017 and for some reason it got a bit of a bad rap. Now the reviews for like Saints have been good and I think like anywhere you look at it, it's, I think it's 82% on Tomatoes with Critics. But I don't know, the talk around it was that it was a bit empty and it was a brilliant performance by Jessica Chastain. But I actually think the story is incredible and she is obviously brilliant in it, but it's a great one to go back and rewatch. And she, you're just watching her and she's always on the edge of danger. 
And you're like, how are you living your life like this? Like she's been chased by the mafia. If you don't know the story, it's Molly Bloom, basically true story, Molly Bloom, who basically who set up these um, high stake poker games. And you're kind of trying to guess who the people are involved. At one point, you're like, who's that actor? And there's rumors about who that actor is. But um, she's she's just great in it. And I just think it's a it's a good if you have a couple of hours, it's definitely worth a watch. It's Sorkin's first director, uh, 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 Turner's director, and he's written in as well. And I just think Sorkin's genius. But I really enjoyed it. Okay, and then uh, everybody's talking about banging on about Line of Duty at the moment. Is Line of Duty any good? <laughs> Have I talked to you about my obsession with Line of Duty um, and Adrian Dunbar? Uh, I I'm on. I just finished the first episode, and I don't want to give anything away, but like I just love it now. Like Kelly MacDonald, I was like, I don't think Kelly MacDonald is the greatest actress in the world, but she that's why she's perfect as a police woman because it's just like read these lines and say you're doing these right and you know. But you, they're investigating her, and it's it's. I like that they just haven't gone down the route of who's the person that's behind this. They're still dealing with the the uh, every every series they deal with some kind of conspiracy. So it's it's just great. It's really great. Like TV it doesn't make a lot of sense sometimes. You're like that doesn't make any sense, but it doesn't matter because it's just great. <laughs> that sounds like the type of thing that would annoy me. Is it actually good, Sue, or is it? Go on. Yeah. Tell me. Is it? It good? is. Yeah, it's really good. Like, it's just, it's just something, like, some of the conversations that they have, you're just like, no one would have that conversation in real life. You know what I mean? It could be a bit stu- Like, the script could be a bit stunted. And sometimes you could see, like, oh, God, that's a real plot hole. Like, there's no way that would happen. Or how did that person get back selling there? Selling there, so keep selling. <laughs> Bad but that's script, if you're, like, if you're forensically amazing. watching it. <laughs> But like it's really like it's full attention. There's great car chases, all that kind of okay. stuff, and it just okay. it just makes the police look way cooler sometimes. Than they are. Okay, nice. Pro, <laughs> you know pro police propaganda, <laughs> yeah. plot holes, and bad acting. Hooray! <laughs> that sounds really bad. It's not. It's very very good. You will enjoy it. Like it's good police okay. drama. We'll talk about yeah. season five of The Wire next week. I think uh, if everybody can get there in time. Uh, Sue, good stuff. Thanks very much. That's this week's uh, OTB TV picks from uh, Sue.